Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun Next. Before I jump in, I want to show you one of the cool things they're doing with the tech preview of Excel 2010, actually all of Office 2010. Uh, when you're working along and you see something you like or something you don't like, they have icons down at the bottom for either send a smile or send a frown. And when I choose send a frown, they capture the screenshot, they let me uh, send who I am and then explain what my problem is. Uh, this is great. Usually when I see something stupid that they do, uh, I just complain to you. But now I actually get to uh, send this and it gets sent right into Microsoft and they can see what the issue is. Uh, pretty cool. Hopefully they'll be able to take all of these comments from all the people who are in the technical preview and uh, incorporate them. All right. Uh, hey, let's uh, let's jump in. I want to talk about uh, functions in Excel. Now, for a long time, we've had about 350 functions, 351 in Excel 2003, and then 356 in Excel uh, 2007. Well, they've added 56 new functions, an amazing array of new functions. And so let's take a look at. Uh, one of my favorite ones here is the net work days function, which has been around for a while. Uh, equal net work days uh, from a start date, and I'll lock this in here to that Friday. Press F4 to the current date. And the cool thing about net work days is it tells you how many days away uh, a date is, but it ignores weekends. Well, it ignores weekends if you're in the United States and you have Saturday and Sunday off. But if you're anywhere else where Saturday and Sunday is not your typical weekend, this function just doesn't work for you. Now, in the book, Excel Gurus Gone Wild, I went through this horrendous explanation of how you could do network days, you know, to exclude other pairs of dates. But Microsoft has given us a great new set of functions uh, to handle this. So, this works for both network days and the workday function. Equal net workdays dot international. Check that out. So, same thing. We start with the start date, press F4, go to the current date. And I will press F4 three times, lock it to column B, and then we get to specify a parameter from 1 to 7. Uh, so we'll use D1 here, I'll press F4 twice to lock that to the row, and we'll copy this down. And you can see that these vary. Number one is weekdays on Saturday and Sunday, uh, but number two is weekdays on Sunday, Monday. Here I've actually color coded it uh, so we can get a better view. So the one is Saturday, Sunday, two is Sunday, Monday, um, six is Thursday, Friday, seven is Friday, Saturday. So whatever weekend you happen to have, provided it's a two day weekend, the network days and workday functions will work for you. I'm going to cover one more before I send it over to Mike, and that's the rank function. Uh, traditionally, rank always had a problem in that if there were ties, uh, it did not work the way that people wanted it to work. We would have one, 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 three items ranked number one, so there'd be nothing ranked two and three. They would go right to four. Well, they tried to improve this by doing rank.eq, which works exactly the same way as the old one, and then rank.avg. And what rank.avg does is if there's two items ranked 7, it ranks them both 7.5. Oh. Maybe that is what someone wants to do, like statistical people, but uh, not me. I need there to be a 1, I need there to be a 2, I need there to be a 3. Uh, so that's why everyone always posts to use the rank plus the count if. That's because we're going to be doing matches into this to get the items as ranked 1, 2, and 3. So when I saw that they changed the rank but they missed the point, well, hey, that was a great chance to send a frown and say, you know, hey, look, this I see that you're working on rank, but you got it wrong. You didn't get the one that most people want to do. All right, well, hey, I want to send this over to Mike. Out of those 56 new functions, most of them are statistical functions, and Mike teaches statistics out at Highline College in Washington. So he's going to show us a few of his favorite statistical functions. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Oh, 2010 and statistics, just amazing. As Mr. Excel mentioned, over 50 new functions and they're almost all statistics. Now, one thing that Mr. Excel's mentioned a lot when we've done these duels is uh, how cool it is we get these different uh, points of view. Now, let's go back to this one, rank.av. This is the second best function they put in. Why? I used to do boomerang score sheets or, or score sheets for events, and you have to use something like this when it gets to scoring ties. If you get 83 and 83 for a competition, you have to divide the placing points up so they get exactly half. Here's the old way 
way we used to do it, right? A, r a ridiculous formula. They actually did have this in help, but it's ridiculous when you have, oh, just so easy to do ranked on av. So of course, that was the second smiley I sent in. The first one I sent in was for the uh, percentile. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. Percentile, here we have some values. And percentile, all it does is if you want the 85 percentile, you say, uh, that'll say 85% of the values are below 15 above. Now, in uh, earlier versions, this is how you have to, used to do it, equals percentile. And look at this. This is new in 2010, of course. Uh, this came, this drop down came out in 7, but ah, down here red do not use sign it says they don't want you to use these please use the new ones now these are compatible and you know all your old sp spreadsheets will of course work uh, these are compatible functions but let's just go ahead and use this one and see how it worked in the old version you highlighted the whole range and you said I want the 85 percentile now what it spit out 58.4 what in the world is it now I used to teach with this function and I actually knew the algorithm for how they calculate it and taught it in class, but it was just too bizarre. Uh, the more common n, which is the count plus one times the uh, uh, whatever percentage you have, gave you the position. This would give you uh, 8.5, so you'd count down 8.5, and the value was somewhere in between these two. It was actually 0.5 through this interval. I don't know what that one is. So uh, of course, I used to teach people how to do it by hand, or I'd give them this formula. Oh, that was just horrible. And look at this. Percentile.exe replaces that monstrosity and gives you exactly n plus 1 times a percentile. So percentile is my favorite new function. Uh, confidence intervals. Now, confidence intervals are for, and here's the new function, confidence intervals are for taking samples. And you need some margin of error on either side of your sample for, for an estimate, because you're using sample data. Now, if you use the normal distribution, it was straightforward. You could use equals confidence. And there it is. It says do not use. But now you use confidence norm for, for the normal distribution. And here's the big improvement for the t distribution. When you don't have the standard deviation from the population, you had to switch the t distribution. Here's how you'd have to do it. You'd have to do at least one, two, three steps. But now, with confidence t, you can do it in one step to get the margin of error. Just awesome. Another huge improvement is the t function for t distributions. Now, I won't bore you with all the, the stats, but when you don't know population standard deviation, which is probably most of the time you're supposed to use the uh, t distribution. Now, there's one tail uh, on the upper end, one tail on the lower end, and two tail tests, especially when you're doing hypothesis testing. And when you want to do one tail on the upper end, the problem is the t dis functions, a couple things. They only spit out values. They only dealt with things on the upper end. So when you got to the lower end, you had trouble. Like for instance, example, your x's couldn't be negative. Uh, so what they've done is instead of just using one t dis, they have t dis right. That's for the upper end. Then you come down to a lower end, and they kept the same function. Um, oops, right here, t, but it's t.dist. And that's for the uh, lower end or the left. And this is what you used to have to do. If you had a negative uh, test statistic, which is number of standard deviations below the mean, ah, you'd have to do negative. So that was because the t.dist function only dealt with things on the upper end. So this is a great improvement that we can use the right. So we use the right version, or t.dist for the left, and they've added the uh, two tail. So when you had a two tail uh, in the past, you'd still have to use this and specify the number of tails. But now they have t dis two tail for two tail. So there's a two tail. The left is the just the dist, and then the right is oops. The right is this new uh, uh, right function here dot right. All right, there's some example of the new amazing statistics functions. We'll see you next trick. Oh, I, by the way, I, I have to say, I cannot wait for this to come out. What? So I can make my students buy it, and we can use it in our stats class. See you next trick.
Mike, that was absolutely hilarious when the send a smile comes in. So now out at Microsoft, they got two competing uh, views. Send a frown from Jellen, send a smile from Gervin, both talking about the same feature. That's hilarious. Hey, thanks for the great recap of the stats functions. If you're a stats person, you're going to love the new functions in Excel 2010. Catch you up. Hey, we'll catch you next time for another dueling Excel podcast from Excel is Fun and Mr. Excel.